Hi, I'm Jay Crawford and I'm the Director of Communications with the Charlottesville Regional Chamber of Commerce and I'm here today to talk to you about the importance of clear communication. Communication is the process of conveying information from a sender to a receiver, but it's much more complicated than that. It started with cave painting, advanced to smoke signals, it moved through Morse code and has exploded into an ever-expanding world of communications mediums that include texts and emails and instant messages. So, how do you find success in these many avenues of communications? Well, that's a difficult question because each medium has its own set of rules and standards. And like I said, they are all more complicated as technology expands. So, what I want to concentrate and get through to you today is talking about the importance of interpersonal communications, the communications between other people. The first key to success is understanding that intercommunications is inescapable. We cannot not communicate. Everything that we do, everything that we say, every move that we make says something. Even the very attempt not to communicate communicates. So through not only words, but through the tone of voice, through gesture, posture, facial expression, we constantly communicate to those around us. The second key is understanding and appreciating that, that communication requires that all parties understand a common language. Otherwise, there is no communication. And clear communication is made even more complicated when we consider the amount of communication that occurs between people. The longer you and I talk, the more difficult it's going to be to make everything clear. So the longer communication goes on, the more body language we involve, the more difficult it's going to be. The number of people involved is going to complicate matters because then those communication channels change with each person and the length of the conversation again. And finally, the organizational communication involved, which may include bosses, it may include coworkers, it may include fellow students, a number of things involved there. Proper channels of communication even, and all of those things make something that seems relatively simple even more complicated. It is a very, very complicated issue. So let's just deal with people for today. It's only half-heartedly joked in communication logic similar to Murphy's Law that if a message can be interpreted in several ways, it will definitely be interpreted in the manner that does the most damage. And it's true. It's true. And there are always people who know your message better than you, and they are your receivers. It doesn't matter how well you know your message, if you don't communicate it clearly, the people who are receiving will think they know better than you what you just said. And it might be the case, so communicate clearly. Put simply, your receiver only knows what they think they heard you say and convey with your tone of voice, with your body movements, etc. So without clear communication, they have no idea what you really intended to say. And with that in mind, it's important when you're the receiver to ask questions. I make people angry myself by asking questions. I want to make absolutely sure that I heard what I heard and that they meant what I thought I heard. So don't be afraid to ask questions. The people who tell you that there is no such thing as a dumb question are right, especially in communications. And I learned my lesson from reading headlines during my 18 years in the newspaper business. So here are a few examples that I hope you enjoy, but more importantly, I hope they illustrate my point. Grandmother of eight makes hole in one. Safety experts say school bus passengers should be belted. Complaints about NBA referee growing ugly. Two Soviet ships collide, one dies. Enraged cow injures farmer with ax. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never seen a cow that could carry an ox. Stolen painting found by tree. Red tape holds up new bridges. Include your children when baking cookies. And finally, lack of brains hinders research. 
the lack of brains can also do the same thing with clear communication. So the reason all of these things are important to understand is that interpersonal communication applies to every aspect of our lives. At home, at work, at play, and it is irreversible. You can't take back something once you've said it. Once a word goes out of your mouth, you can never swallow it again. So, in conclusion, with all of that said, here are just some simple tips to help you with successful and clear communication. One, have confidence. Have confidence in yourself, have confidence in your topic, have confidence in the way you say it, in the way you behave it. If you do those things, if you present yourself in that manner, it'll become more clear that people will believe what you had to say and they'll listen. And start small with conversation. Don't get into the conversation with the heavy topics first. Start with an introduction as I did today and build up to the points that you want to discuss. Use open-ended questions to draw your receivers into the conversation. Don't ask yes and no questions. That's what you're going to get. Ask them questions that will draw them into the conversation and will get them included. And then show an interest in their input once you do get them involved. If you ask them something and then don't listen to their reply, they're not going to reply again. So show an interest in what they have to say. Listen twice and speak once. And someone very wise, much wiser than I once said, you are given two ears and one mouth for a reason. We all know what that reason is. Do twice as much listening as you do talking and you're gonna be fine. Knowledge is power. Know your topic. Know when to stop talking about the topic. Nobody knows everything about everything. If you get into a conversation and you don't know the topic, talk about the parts that you do know and listen for the rest. You can pick up a lot of information just by listening, but knowledge is power. And it also includes knowing your receivers, knowing what they wanna hear, knowing how you have to communicate. Very, very important. And finally, avoid taking unnecessary risks in communication. Be sure of what you say or don't say it. Don't take a risk. Be sure you say what you say clearly or don't take the risk. And remember, it's okay to disagree. Disagreeing is not taking a risk as long as you do it in a positive way. So I thank you for your time. I thank you for listening. I thank you for considering what I've said and coming from a former journalism teacher. If just one of you benefits from this, my time's been well spent. Thank you and happy communications.